know it has been quite a spell of time since uh, we've had a tutorial on my channel, uh, but I was reminded of something that is not too terribly difficult to move, but really, really teaches a lot of the subtleties of stalls that uh, a lot of people in the beginner to intermediate range of poise spinning see, and uh, almost always are taken with and be like, ooh, ah, how do we do that? Uh, and that move is what's become called the stall chaser. This really didn't have a name for a very long time, but it seems like stall chaser has become the name that has clicked with it. Um, and it's actually a combination of two stalls staggered next to each other, right? Uh, so first let's talk about what happens in the arms here, and then we'll talk about what happens with the poi. Now, with the arms, what's happening is you're going between points at which the poi are separate, and the, or rather, your hands are separate, and the hands are together, right? Um, and it's almost like a, a kind of race, where one hand is struggling to get ahead of the other, and then the other pulls ahead. Then they're struggling to keep neck and neck, and the other one comes ahead. Um, the, the basic move, if you want to go ahead and, uh, and break it down, will be your right hand. It, uh, start from spread out arms like this. Your right hand is going to reach down and around to meet up with your left hand. The two of them together are going to reach overhead together, and when they reach the right-hand side of your body, your left hand is going to go down and around. Now you're going to do the reverse of this. So the left hand is going to come down and around, meet up with the right hand. They're both going to go over together, and then the right hand is going to drop down and around to return you to the place that you, uh, you started at, right? So you can think of this as separate, together, together, separate. Together, together, separate. Together, together, separate, if you want to think about each of the sides, right? Now this is the easy part. The harder part is grasping the subtleties of what happens with the stalls as you're doing this. Now, we're used to kind of thinking of stalls as just being a place where the poi come to stop, but they have an additional property to them that they can be used to create interesting horizontal lines in midair, right? Like, for example, if I were to take my right hand poi and sweep it around in a big circle like this, the way we would by default do this is just have essentially the poi be an extension of what the arm is doing, right? Now stall chasers are interesting because we can make that same choice, but instead uh, have the poi kind of trailing behind the hand. That is, deliberately create a situation where the tether goes kind of limp, like this. And in essence, what you're trying to do there is you're trying to keep just enough tension on the tether to keep the poi head following it, while also making sure that it doesn't go out completely. It's really, really, really kind of uh, tight series of, uh, of maneuvers to execute. There, there's a balance to be found there. There is a Goldilocks perfect zone in this. So think of it this way, that initially you're going to start training yourself to go from bottom stall to top stall, and then from top stall to bottom stall. I lied, this is a down stall, and this is an up stall. So we're really just going back and forth between stalling up and stalling down, between stalling up and stalling down. Now I want you to slow down the way that you're coming out of the down stall. Rather than just reaching around for the up stall, you're actually going to see how long you can keep that poi head following behind your hand. And ideally, what you're looking to do is create this moment above your head where the hand and the poi are horizontal in relation to each other, like that. So it becomes more of, instead of you reaching around, uh, it becomes more of a drag and then stall up. Still works though, right? It's a drag and then stall up, yeah? And of course, on the way back, you're going to try and do the opposite. Now this one is really challenging. Instead of just reaching around, once again, for the down stall, we're going to reach this point over here on our left-hand side when the poi normally would be faced away from us, and instead, we're going to let the poi head get ahead of ourselves, ahead of the hand. Something like this. The way you think of this is you actually think, I'm going to actually start the stall over here on my left-hand side. So as it goes down and around, I'm already preparing for it to droop over here. Um, if you've done my stall tutorial from before, you'll remember that one of the uh, kind of metaphors that I give for how a stall works is thinking of the poi head as being something like a rocket, and it's dragging your hand back behind it, yeah? Uh, this is the perfect place for that metaphor to work. You want to imagine that the rocket is coming off of the pad way over here on your left-hand side, and it's dragging your hand over to the other side. This is going to take a lot of practice. It's very, very subtle, and it's very, very delicate. Uh, in fact, you'll probably start off just doing this in a very small area directly in front of you. Yeah? Um, another way that I could describe this to you is that as the poi is coming over around to your left side, you want to switch almost into doing the stall in slow motion. Yeah? Um, so, slow it down 
slow it down, and then speed it up. Speed it up, slow it down, slow it down, and then speed it up. So that right hand, whenever it's going across the top, and actually this is true of both hands, is going to, uh, for a second, seem like it's dropped into slow motion, right? Now, you're going to have to train the other hand how to do this, too. The next challenge is going to be putting it all together. So I usually start with my right hand spinning in a clockwise direction over on my far right hand side. And I think I'm going to drop it down and around to slow motion and then bring my left hand over. S slow motion over and out. Slow motion over and out. Slow motion over and out. And of course the butter zone with this is finding that straight line feeling as it's going across the top of you. To start with, it's totally okay to keep this in close to your body, especially if it helps you maintain that straight line feel. But as you go on and get more experienced with it, really, really reach out and eat up more room with this. This is one of those moves that looks absolutely beautiful the more room you take up with it. And of course, there's all kinds of fun stuff that you can do with it. For instance, after you do that stall up, you can do an anti-spin pedal over to begin the stroke back the other way. So instead of doing the drop down and around, you can instead do anti-spin pedal up, and when the poi comes back around, you do the stall chaser around. You can also add a body tracer to this. So in that point when the poi head is pointed up, you can drop it back beneath your shoulder and initiate the body, tr the uh, stall chaser from there, like so. Under the shoulder and around. Under the shoulder and around. Under the shoulder and around. Yeah? Um, there's a really, really, really difficult one that you can do. Uh, Teddy Petrosky actually came up with this, wherein after you take it over, you continue the motion around. And as you do so, you use that little moment when you could stall with an inspin flower. Ooh, hang on. As the moment that initiates the stall chaser back over. But again, the subtleties of that are pretty complex at this point. It's something to reach for. For right now, if you can get this and make it feel good, this is just such an awesome move in and of itself, and it's such a great tool for doing tunneling and so many other things. It's also a great transition to get into split time, same direction moves. So, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys this week. Thank you for watching, and I will try and have another tutorial for you next Wednesday. Peace.